Texturing is a great way to add details to the drawings, and that's why I always make sure to use textures in my work, because it's a simple yet very effective way to increase the quality of the drawings. And that's why I wanted to show you five typical textures that I often use in my drawings. Now, I personally use very few textures in my drawings because, you know, the buildings around us are really only made up from like three to five main materials. So I think it kind of makes sense to keep things simple when it comes to drawings and representing those materials. So the first texture that I use almost every time is the timber. And timber can be found in many buildings. It's usually in the form of veneer that's covering the fixtures and the furniture, and sometimes it's exposed in the form of structural beams or columns. In order to draw timber, I usually try to replicate the grains and the knots in the woodwork using wavy lines with breaks and interruptions. It's a great way to go about showing this texture because typically people recognize it really quickly. One thing to note is when using timber textures that you kind of need to use a judgment of scale so that things that you're drawing don't look out of proportion and you know it kind of comes with the practice but because timber is a very warm and inviting material it does pay off to use it quite often. And I use the same type of timber texture no matter what I'm trying to replicate you know whether it's a plywood desktop or a timber door. But the exception to the rule is the floorboards and the slats in the wall. Walls. For these types of textures, I'll basically use line work either in perspective or orthogonally to represent individual boards that make up laminates and slats. With floorboards, I might introduce the breaks where planks connect and occasionally I will overlay this texture with the timber grain texture as well to add an additional kind of interest. And for timber slats, I'll usually use lines drawn orthographically with equal spacing and you know, for interest, I'll introduce the breaks in between them to portray the kind of illusion of the lighter area in the middle of the slats. Now the other most popular type of texture that I'll use is some sort of natural texture like a grass or a foliage. Um, you know starting with the grass there's two types of grass that I usually show. The first one is the turf like grass and the second one is more like a, a wildflower mix. Now for the regular grass I'll use a kind of wiggly approach in the line formation and I'll start with a, a dense pattern towards the bottom of the page and then gradually will fade out to kind of mimic the perspective. Now with wildflowers for example it's more about conveying the spirit of the stems being pushed in one direction because of the wind. And then a little top hat to represent the, the actual flower. On the bottom of that I'll use uh, another kind of wiggly line to represent some of the weeds uh, that are sometimes found on the bottom. Now in this tutorial I'm not going to go into explaining how to draw trees because it is a bit of a different category of drawing because it has the additional challenge to represent the foliage in 3D but I will link up a video over here that I made before on how to draw trees if you're interested checking that out. So next up we have probably one of the most versatile textures there are and that's a dotted texture. Now it consists of very simple dots uh, spaced out more or less equally in a random pattern and depending on what you're drawing it can be labor intensive and almost like zen exercise to do this sort of texture. I typically reserve it for things like concrete, plasterboard, gravel or any other type of aggregate type of texture. The trick with the dotted texture in my opinion is not to overdo it and to reserve it to very small areas. For concrete for example I'll use it to show a vague notion of the shadow for example around windows and the contact shadows in the corners of the rooms. And the additional benefit of this approach is that one I don't have to spend loads of time dotting in textures and two heavily dotted textures can actually take away from the drawing so it's best to avoid them when possible in order to keep the attention to the most important and relevant bits of the drawing. And then we have the hatch pattern and the hatch can be shown in many different ways. I typically pull lines in a single direction perpendicular to one another with same spacing as much as possible and that way I can form a very neat pattern that has the same shading intensity because you know if the lines are distributed to then equally it can create a kind of darker and lighter areas in the hatch which you kind of want to avoid. Hatching is mostly about representing you know where the light is coming from and showing the shadows in the drawings and I used to use this all the time uh, when I was manually drawing with a pen or a pencil because I didn't have any other tools to show shadows so I would use uh, a formation of lines to represent that and you know these days I use Procreate and uh, Morfolio Trace and other drawing apps to do that so the need for hatching is kind of gone but you know sometimes on rare occasions I will hatch certain areas um, in order to either emphasize them, introduce a bit more texture to them, or to make those darker areas a bit more punchy. Now I've 
chosen these textures to specifically tailor my architectural work. I have found that these five work quite well for me. You know, I do try to keep my textures to the minimum to um, streamline my workflow and to make things more efficient so that I don't have to spend ages drawing things. But you know, I think it's worthwhile experimenting and see what kind of textures work for you. As always on this channel, we cover tips and techniques on how to draw digitally. You know, digital drawing has actually quite a lot of advantages over the traditional drawing. One of them is that you have an enormous selection of different brushes that you can use without having to worry about carrying them with you. Another advantage is that you can take your tablet anywhere you like, you don't have to rely on things like light being perfect, you don't even have to be at your desk, you can literally draw anywhere you like. There's also all sorts of other tricks that are simply unavailable in a traditional medium. So if digital workflow is something that interests you, then I encourage you to subscribe to this channel, check out some other videos on digital workflows on this channel. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.